Hello everyone, in this video we'll be learning about attachment. In specific, we'll be talking about learning theories of attachment. If you follow the AQA a specification of A level psychology, then you'll be interested to know that this pops up in your specification. Um, there's about eight, thing, eight things that you have to learn about attachment, and this is just going to be bullet point number one. And if you can see here, right here, you need to learn about the explanations of attachment, including learning theory, and that is what we will be learning. To Okay, so when you think about learning theory in psychology, so when we think about the learning theories of attachment in psychology, we think of mainly two theories. One of them is operant conditioning, we'll be talking about that, and the other one is classical conditioning, we will also be talking about that. And don't worry, this is not the last time you'll be seeing these two fellas. Okay, so let's start with classical conditioning. Classical conditioning was pretty much pi pioneered by a physiologist, not psychologist, a physiologist by the name of Ivan Pavlov. He did a series of studies involving dogs and it started in 1849 and it ended in around 1936 because he did it for years. So Pavlov was investigating the process of salivation in dogs. But along the way, he found out something that became very useful to psychologists. What Ivan Pavlov observed is that whenever he showed food to the dogs, they would begin to salivate or drool or dribble. So he decided that the food would be the unconditioned stimulus is sort of an instinct by instinct the dogs would see the food and they would start to salivate so that's the unconditioned stimulus now the salivation in the dog the dribbling that's known as the unconditioned response like the dog cannot help it. It sees food, it starts to salivate. That's the unconditioned response. It's the dog's response to the food. Okay? So, the process of learning came when Ivan realized that actually, mm, I shouldn't call him Ivan, I should call him Pavlov because you have to remember Pavlov. Okay? Now, Pavlov noticed that the dogs actually started to salivate before they even saw the food. They started to salivate when the door opened. So it was then concluded that the dogs had associated the door opening with food. So now, just by opening the door, the dogs would produce their response of salivating. But because they're not salivating to the original stimulus, which will be the unconditioned stimulus, this association between the food and the door has made the door the conditioned stimulus. The dogs have been conditioned to associate this door, this door opening with food. So now the door is the conditioned stimulus and the dog's response to the door is the conditioned response okay so before when it was the food it was the unconditioned stimulus and the unconditioned response but with the door it's the conditioned stimulus which produces a conditioned response the dog has associated the door with the food and now responds to the door in the same way that he responds to the food Okay, now let's relate this to attachment. Let's think of a baby's food. Bam! A baby's food, in the same way as with dogs, is the unconditioned stimulus. The baby sees the food, it wants the food, it's the unconditioned stimulus, okay? So, when the baby sees the food and it has the food, oh my god, I'm happy, I'm gonna feed, yay! 
That is the unconditioned response. So in the same way that the dog associated the door opening with food, let's say the baby associates the food with pleasure. Since the food is coming from the main caregiver, the baby will now associate the main caregiver that is providing it with food to a pleasurable state. So the main caregiver becomes the conditioned stimulus and the baby's happy response to the main caregiver becomes the conditioned response. And in this way, by associating the conditioned stimulus to food, the baby forms an attachment with the caregiver. But who wouldn't form an attachment with Beyonce? Now, let's talk about operant conditioning. Operant conditioning is a type of learning that is based on rewards and punishment. It's the most common type of learning that we would think of without having to use our psychology minds if you're rewarded for doing something you'd want to do it more and you continue to show that behavior but if you're punished for doing something you will stop doing it or not do that behavior so often so how do we relate operant conditioning to attachment dollard and miller in 1950 remember that dollard and miller 1950 dnm 1950 sorry i get silly this is how i remembered all my studies basically dollard and miller offered an explanation of how operant conditioning relates to attachment they proposed the drive reduction theory now let's imagine a hungry baby okay he's hungry now the feeling of hunger is uncomfortable and This creates a drive in the baby to reduce that discomfort. The baby is seeking comfort by not being hungry. Aren't we all? So the drive reduction theory is all about reducing the feeling of discomfort. So boom, out of nowhere comes a bottle, comes the food. This makes the baby happy. The food becomes the primary reinforcer because it stamps in or reinforces the behavior that avoids discomfort. Now the person who provides the food then becomes the secondary reinforcer because the baby now believes that this person will reduce its discomfort so through that the baby creates a bond with the secondary reinforcer which could also be seen as attachment now if you're being extra and you want an extra study as an extra treat i will give you sears et al 1957 they simply found that wanting a mother's presence becomes a secondary or a learned drive because she's paired with the relief of hunger and tension. Sears et al. 1957 supports this as well as Dollard and who? Dollard and Miller. What year? 1950. I don't believe in really long videos and really long learning sessions, so take a breather. You've earned it. On the next episode, we'll be talking about AO2, evaluation points for the learning theory of attachment. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, let me know in the comments. If you want to see something else, let me know in the comments and I will try. I'll just say that for now. I will try. Happy revising. I wish you all the best. See you next time.